All right. Thanks everybody for coming today. I'm happy to be presenting this webinar on the Alberta Invasive Business Council and our Don't Let It Lose Retailer Recognition Program. My name is Chelsea and I'm the Aquatic Invasive Species Technician with the AISC. Um, this webinar is both for existing retailers and um, those that are uh, looking to join our program. So we're just gonna give you some program updates and um, the webinar is also going to be recorded and add, added to our website in case you want to access it in the future. So some background on the Alberta Invasive Species Council. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to increasing awareness and educating Albertans about the destructive impacts that invasive species have on our environment, economy, and our society. We serve as a respected source of credible information and resources on invasive species in Alberta, and we engage and empower Albertans to prevent, detect, and take action on invasive species. These are just some of the programs that we run in addition to the Don't Let It Loose program. Um, so we focus on all species in the province, like wild boar. Um, we also have plant-specific programs like Grow Instead and Play Plain Go. We also partner with EdMaps, um, which is an app used for reporting invasive species. So aquatic invasive species are exotic species that lack natural predators and have negative impacts on their environment. The harm caused by aquatic invasives is not only seen in Alberta, but worldwide. These are just some of the examples of how aquatic invasives can alter the ecosystem, um, but each species is unique and comes with its own set of issues. As the number of introductions of aquatic invasives uh, increase, the more difficult and costly they become to manage. So this is an example here of aquatic plants um, and how they can easily outcompete other plants and crowd out um, water bodies. And here is an example of zebra mussels. They can cause substantial infrastructure damage um, and how they can attach to basically any surface to live on. So in Alberta, we, the threat of invasive species continues to grow every year as new species are introduced. And unfortunately with a warming climate and increased globalization, the problem is only going to get worse. There are two main methods of introduction for aquatic invasive species. These are intentional release and accidental transportation. So we continue to see examples of this in the province. Um, some issues that we have here in Alberta include over 100 goldfish populations. Some of them are as far north as Fort McMurray, and these are the result of intentional release. They can survive our winters and they can increase water turbidity, limiting aquatic plant growth, and um, they can also contribute to increases in algae blooms. We also have a number of flowering rush infestations in the province. Again, this is a water garden plant that escaped or was intentionally released, and it can easily outcrowd lakes and ponds and outcompete native vegetation. Then down here we have Chinese mystery snail. Um, so there's a large population of this snail, Lake McGregor, um, which is just east of Calgary. It's the only known location in the province. Um, again, the result of intentional release. These snails can clog water intake pipes like zebra mussels, and they can also transmit disease and parasites to fish and other wildlife. They also compete with native snails for food, and they adversely affect the aquatic food web. So why do we want to work with aquarium um, and pet retailers? In 2021, there was a case of zebra mussels found in rainbow moss balls. At the time of this incident, moss balls were a popular aquarium and decorative plant, and they had to be all contained and decontaminated. So recognition of the zebra mussels played a vital role in preventing the escape of these invertebrates into Alberta's water bodies. And thankfully, we still remain mussel-free, but this was a wake-up call to the province. And these are kind of the stats that we received from government of Alberta with the number of stores and the number of zebra mussels confirmed in those stores, as well as the amount of moss walls that were voluntarily surrendered. surrendered. Um, in 2021, there was also a federal government advisory report that was released, and this was a completed analysis to determine movement of live aquatic organisms into Canada and within Canada through the aquarium, water garden, and live food trade. Um, the advisory report involved identifying the number of spatial and distribution, spatial distribution, ports of entry, distribution, retailers, and end users. For the aquarium and water garden trades, the top three ports of entry were in Windsor, Ontario, Mirabel, Quebec, and Calgary, Alberta. 
Based on four month period in 2018, the greatest number of live organisms was imported by the live food trade, which is around 82 million. As you can imagine though, a lot of these live food are then consumed. Um, and then that was followed by the aquarium um, trade with 4 million organisms and the water garden industry, which was 3 million um, organisms. And so the movement of live organisms within Canada is documented from the ports of entry um, to the distributors, but not from distributors to retailers and end users. So we don't really have any clear, clear idea of where they go from there. The province also created a list of 52 prohibited species, which were listed under the Alberta Fisheries Act. Um, this included 25 invasive fish, 16 freshwater invasive plants, and 11 other aquatic invasive species like diseases and invertebrates. The list was created to stop the no importing of known aquatic invasive species that have caused substantial damage to the environment in Alberta and elsewhere. Some species, like goldfish, were not included on this list and can still easily be found in pet stores. However, it is illegal to release aquatic species into Alberta's waterways, no matter what they are. So before we started our program, we considered a three-year study by Ken Donnelly um, that found some interesting results. So majority of aquarium hobbyists acquire their species from chain retailers and some locally owned shops. Only 60 to 39% um, trust locally owned retailers as a source for non-invasive species, uh, whether that be verbal information or actual species. However, the study also found that people do not get their information from the pet stores themselves, although they're the most trusted source. So this must be because that retailers aren't providing that information at the store itself. Um, so people want the information, but they are not getting it from retailers. Um, and further, they asked if hobbyists would be more likely to buy from a seller that had proof of participation in a program um, that was focused on prevention, training, and recognition. 79% of respondents said yes. So this is great news for retailers interested in joining our program as they are able to fill that knowledge gap. So some background on our Don't Let It Loose program. Some of the most serious invasive species were originally sold as pets or plants for aquariums and water gardens. Considering this information, it's evident how the aquarium and pond industries can be allies in our messaging. The Don't Let It Loose campaign creates awareness that releasing aquarium pets, plants, live food, or water is not only damaging to our environment and our economy, but it is also illegal. We started our pilot in 2022 with a goal to train the trainer and fill knowledge gaps on the aquarium and pond industry. And we also completed surveys to gain understanding of what retailers would be interested. Um, so the AISC works with the aquarium and pond industry through our retailer recognition program to provide store owners and staff with the training materials and educational resources focused on Don't Let It Loose. We also recognize our aquarium and pond retailer stores that partner with us and pledge to stop the spreading of aquatic invasives through learning about the program and distributing our Don't Let It Loose information. And our target audience um, for this program is going to be pond retailers, pet retailers, their owners, their staff, and customers. Because intentional release is a main pathway of introduction, we want uh, to target these retail owners and staff and their customers to spread the messaging at the source. Since many aquatic invasives have or can um, be bought through pet stores, we need to target the customers purchasing these species to create behavior change. Research has also shown that individuals are the most receptive to this messaging at the point of sale as the retailers are seen as trusted experts. So the CARE acronym is used in our Don't Let It Lose program. Um, it stands for Contact, Act Responsibly, Report, and End Ownership. And this outlines the key messages for our Don't Let It Lease program. Uh, retailers can assist with these steps by um, being a reliable contact and accepting surrendered pets when that is feasible. Um, and they can also inform customers about how to be responsible pet owners. So some program updates that we have for you this year. After the successful pilot of the program last year, it's now being expanded on a national scale, um, partnered with the Canadian Council on Invasive Species to spread messaging across Canada. 
Um, the AISD is still focused on Alberta's pet and aquarium businesses, and our other provincial councils have their own programs working with the same unified message. We're also working with Don't Let It Loose in the States to share our ideas and rehoming resources. We also work with the Alberta government and Fisheries and Oceans Canada to provide funding and key messages for our program. Um, we've added a lot of new resources on our website for the program, including a code of conduct, an implementation guide, and a retailer booklet. Um, so these are full of great resources for retailers. Um, it has a lot of information on the program, how it's run, um, and kind of things that go along with being a recognized retailer. And we also have a social media toolkit, uh, which is for optional use, um, but that's going to be coming soon. And it'll have great resources like pre-made posts, articles, um, and other things like stickers and resources that you can order directly through the toolkit. Um, you can review these documents at your own pace. Uh, again, they're meant to be helpful for you. And if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Uh, we're also working with local rescue organizations on a rehoming network for unwanted pets. Um, to kind of fill that gap for providing homes for those surrendered animals. So there's lots of advantages to joining our retailer program. We strive to make your participation in the program as easy as possible, which includes a low time commitment on your part. We're always here to assist you with any um, anything you need, uh, implementing and continuing the program, your store, uh, we're happy to help. And we're also open to any ideas that you have that may um, improve our program. So we'll also feature your business on our website, on the CCIS website, in the trade shows, in our newsletter and presentations, and through our social media. Um, and uh, this happens like multiple times a year, so you get a lot of free advertising um, through our organization for this. We also have free um, custom Don't Let It Loose fish bags, which we are in the process of ordering. Um, and this is for an extra perk to retailers. Um, and we are able to cover the cost of those. So that is a free resource for you to use. So to get started, um, if there's any new businesses interested in joining our program, the first step is to get in contact with me. I have my email here and my phone number. Um, you can reach out uh, during any time during business hours. I'm happy to help you. Um, and maybe I'll get paged. I'll have that in the chat as well. Um, the next steps are to review the documents listed on our last slide and to complete the online training and take the pledge. Uh, these can all be found on our website on the retailer page or on the Don't Let It Loose page. Um, you can also take the training yourself and get your staff to take it, um, or you may relay the key messages from the training to your team if you work in a store that has a lot of staff and a high turnover rate. All right, and um, we'll just pause the recording for um, questions here. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for attending our webinar. I appreciate you taking time out of um, your day and you're stepping away from your business. So thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate you ha having you here. And if you haven't already, you can follow us on our social media. Uh, our name is always AB Invasives. Um, and we post a lot of great information consistently about invasive species and what projects we're working on. Um, thanks again for joining and I hope to hear from some of you soon.